Hello and welcome to this week's Wigging It Travel Podcast solo episode. And I'm talking about how Australia changed my life. I'm absolutely winging this episode because I thought, what can I share that's a bit more personal and probably a bit more travel based in terms of me and how I got started on this road, which started pretty much 20 years ago ish when I popped over to Germany on a school trip. That's my first foray into international waters. And didn't really resonate then what would happen in the future, but it was a little bit of intrigue and suspense and like, oh wow, what is this in me there at that point? So Australia, 2010 going into 2011. 2010 was an interesting year. I was stuck into my music course in London. I got mugged, had a couple of girlfriends that year. So yeah, very interesting. And at the last second, I'd probably say around October, I got wind that there was a trip to Australia going with my friends who were going to watch the cricket. Now, I am a bit of a cricket fan. I've always watched it and Australia didn't really enter my mind as a possibility of visiting because it's so far away and I imagined it'd be really expensive. And I thought, well, how could it even be possible to go there? But anyway, 2010 arrives. I've got my student loan. I've got some money, but most of it's debt anyway, credit cards. I thought, why not? Let's book on this trip. And I remember speaking to the travel agent who booked the trip with my friends. And I thought, you know what, let's go for it. So there and then, on the whim, on a phone call, booked my flights and I booked my visa and I was off to watch the cricket in 2010-11. No idea what to expect, but was very excited. Probably more excited I'm going with my friends and I'm going to watch a sporting event. Two big interests there. Didn't really pay much attention to what Australia could be like, but it's locked in and I was ready to go in mid-December. So straight off the bat, we're leaving snowy, cold England And we're on this huge flight towards Southeast Asia to connect towards Perth, which will be our first stop. Then we make our way to Melbourne in the middle of the trip. And a few things hit me as we arrived into Perth. Number one was the heat. Number two was the smell. It's interesting, sort of that summery, burning-like smell because it's so hot and things are dying like the grass and stuff like that. That was an interesting sense. And also I thought, wow, this looks brand new. When you're used to being in a sheltered life in Norwich and UK and Europe for that matter as well and all you see is old town squares, cobbled streets, really old buildings, you're kind of used to that and don't think anything else really exists. So when I land and the roads are big and it's all spacious and all looks quite brand new, I was pretty excited. After the jet lag finished and we got out there into Perth, I could not believe what I was seeing. You've got to bear in mind, this is the first time I've seen a modern city in terms of a few tall buildings. I mean, Perth hasn't got that many anyway, but walking the streets in the CBD was pretty unique and pretty new for me and a bit of a culture shock, if I must be honest. And then we started going to the beaches and the little coastal towns around Perth, and I just couldn't believe how blue the water was, the clean beaches, the warm sand, the squeaky sand. I was like, what is this place? If I'm honest, I'm like, oh, this is like paradise. As soon as we went to Rockingham or Fremantle or Scarborough Beach, which is probably my favourite, or Cottesloe Beach as well in Perth, I think there and then I was like, I need to spend some more time here in the future. Didn't give it too much thought because we're straight into some beers and some cricket. But right then I was like, right, I think I'm coming back here in the future. I was right. It was also the first time I've ever really been in the sunshine that had consistently hot weather totally unprepared, probably didn't even have a hat. My friends had some sunscreen, so I nicked some of that to put on my skin. And I was like, oh, you can literally go outside and not worry about the rain or the weather ruining your day. So that was brand new. And overall, Perth was an unbelievable experience. Met some great people there, enjoyed the cricket, even though we lost. And the most important conversation I had at the cricket was with this dude who was Australian, but his dad was from Leeds. And he sat in front of us whilst we were watching the cricket. It was pretty chilled, classic Australian dude, cap on talking about Perth and about England about the cricket and then he just said to me as I was speaking to him like oh you should come back if you love it that much and I was like well how'd you do that he's like well you just need to get a work permit this is what my friends do they get a work permit they come over for a year or two and then either stay or go back I was like what do you mean a work permit he's like literally go online Australia work permit submit your application it probably will get approved pretty quickly because you've got a british passport and you're in the right criteria for age so i was like oh, okay so i bared that in mind and then i carried on the rest of the trip and i went to melbourne and i absolutely loved that place as well a bit more of a european vibe so a bit more homely but a great city lots of see and do very busy absolutely loved the vibe 
probably helped that England won the cricket at that point. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I need to come back here. So as soon as I got back to London in the cold, snowy weather, early January, after having two and a half weeks in absolute glorious sunshine, it was time to put some action into place. And this absolutely changed my life because at this point, I was like, oh, I don't care about my music degree anymore. I don't care about the guitar. I don't want to be in London. I don't want to be in UK. There's an opportunity to go somewhere else. So I started doing some research and lo and behold, that guy in Perth was absolutely right. But there was one snag in the plan. I couldn't justify going straight away because I did feel like all the investment into my degree, I'd at least need to get it done and get it finished. But at that point, that would be two years away pretty much. So I had to hang on for two years. But straight away in that January, I knew I was going to finish my degree and then get setting off onto my trip. Fast forward about two and a half years from that point, because I did go traveling around the world for six months before settling in Australia, I landed in Melbourne and tried to find a job. And I found one pretty quickly. And I was getting paid the most I've ever been paid before for an admin job. And I was into the Australian lifestyle. So this was good weather, uh, lots of beers in the sunshine sitting outside, lovely parks like Albert Park, getting into my exercise, getting paid well, going out for lunches, going out for dinner, going to the casino, living in a hostel, which was about a five minute walk from my work. So I had a lot of contacts there for some drinks some parties and just an overall amazing time. But I did know there was a rule in Australia for your work permit. This is good to know. I'm not sure if it's changed these days. You can't stay with the same employer for more than six months. So I knew I had to go somewhere else for half the year. And I thought I need to return to Western Australia. I loved it the first time I went in 2010. So I plan to go to Margaret River and do some vineyard work and try and get a second year to go back to Australia. So that involved probably around Christmas time. Again, the cricket comes into it. My friend came over, watched some cricket, had some unbelievable times. Went over to Perth, stayed for a few days, soaked up the atmosphere in the city again, and then headed down three hours down the road to Margaret River to start some work. I think what was key to my one year experience in Australia on the work permit was the first five or six weeks where I did book a six, yeah, six week tour down the East Coast with my friend. And that was ticking off all the classic East Coast activities like Cairns to do the Great Barrier Reef stuff and do some jungle tours. And then we made our way down to Agnes Water, went to Magnetic Island, then went to the Whit Sundays, and went down to Fraser Island. It's all up there on the East Coast, all the classic trail down to Noosa, down to Byron Bay into Sydney and Brisbane and do you know what I just absolutely loved the time but I did run out of money but some of the best times I had on my trip uh, expensive I will say that but a lot of drink based activities the classic Australian way I just fell in love with it and I was glad to be there for a year and I think ultimately when it came to the end of my visa in the May of 2014 I was fully satisfied I was in a lot of the country but also a bit gutted I was leaving I didn't get my days to extend my visa, so I had to go down the route of lying if I want to get back for a second year. I didn't do that. And overall, over those two trips I mentioned there, just love the road trips, love the cities, love the beaches, love the people, great jobs and great money. So many activities, a lot of sport if you're into that as well. New Zealand's just across the water if you want to have a different type of trip. Some great food and wine. It really does have everything in that country and I do heart back to it every day of the week and I miss it pretty much every week of the year. Just a couple of things from me. Please head to my new website, www.wingingittravelpodcast.com. The link is in the show notes. And secondly, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm really enjoying showing you my content I have from the last year or so. Thank you. And since then, I've been back twice to watch some cricket and to check out some areas I didn't check off on my first time I was there. And the reason it did change my life is because before Australia, I was not interested in travel, wasn't really interested in going to different cultures or even having the ability or the foresight to see that you could work somewhere for a year, then travel somewhere else for a year. But it changed my mind on that. And I know Australia is fairly similar to the UK, same language, pretty much the same customs and all of that. But it gave me the platform to go and travel elsewhere in the world and I think from then on I knew that I want to travel as much as I can go to different cultures and also go to amazing countries like Australia and do road trips and see that as much as possible I haven't been back for five or six years now and it's slowly creeping up my list to go back to and I think my next couple of ideas going there would be to check out Tasmania back to Adelaide to check it out I didn't really give it enough respect when I was there and then road trip in a camper van the whole 
southwest to northwest coast in Western Australia. I think that's a bit of a dream of mine. And also come back round to Ayers Rock, which I've not been to either. So yeah, great country if you're between 18 and 30 and or 35, depending on what country you're from and what passport you have. You can definitely get a work permit there. I guarantee you great weather, great lifestyle and unbelievable experiences. Just save a bit of money because it is expensive. So if you're going to travel before or after, you need to get some money in the bank but you won't regret that trip and it might even change your life like it changed mine. I think I'll finish off with some of my top tips for Australia in terms of what to see and do. The must do's, I would say, if I was to go back tomorrow, would be a flight over the Great Barrier Reef. I'm not too keen on going in the water around that area. It needs to be protected, but seeing it from a plane would be pretty awesome. Camping on Fraser Island is an absolute must. A boat tour on the Whit Sundays, which we'd done on the first time we went there, even though it's a bit of a party boat, I would go back and do it on a normal boat and see it for all its glory. But you can also party away if you want to do that as well. Noosa is pretty special. A nice little place that, down by the beach and also Byron Bay. Those two are brilliant. All the major cities all have their own upsides. So if you're looking for the whole experience of the beach culture, the great money, the great weather, city life, all in one, that's got to be Sydney. A more European feel, head down to Melbourne. If you want the classic Australian city with some of the best beaches in the world, that's got to be Perth. But Brisbane and Adelaide are pretty cool too. If you're into your sports, then stuff like the Melbourne Cup is pretty big in Melbourne. That's horse racing. The AFL, so Australian rules, that's huge in the state of Victoria. NRL, so National Rugby League, is also pretty big in Queensland and New South Wales. The state of origin is pretty big there as well. And they do love their cricket, so you can go watch the Boxing Day tests uh, every year. They play a different nation each year. That's a guaranteed awesome event on the same day every year on Boxing Day. All the sport of lounging on a nice beach in Perth is also recommended too. I am longing to go back, so maybe in the future I'll be able to do that road trip in a camper van going up the West Coast and get some content for YouTube, which would be pretty cool. And I will wrap up there. Thank you, Australia, for the sun, the amazing times the parties, the weather, the beaches, and most importantly, the people. Cheers. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with T Public, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as t-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast, and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcasts, and other stuff. Thank you.